Red wine is a type of wine mainly made from black grape must. Every year, 24 billion liters of wine are consumed worldwide, which is the same amount of water that flows over Niagara Falls for two hours. However, to produce this incredible volume of wine, small-scale growers have had to resort to traditional techniques and improve them. Remind, we have a giveaway of a $100 valued item of your choice for the first 1,000 subscribers. Hurry up and don't miss it. This winery produces Yellowtail, one of the best-selling wines in the world, and produces nearly 150 million bottles per year. We are in New South Wales, Australia. Perhaps it is not as famous as Bordeaux, but this city is at the heart of one of the most famous wine regions in the world. A few kilometers to the east is the immense Castle Plant, one of the largest wine plants in the world. They store enough wine to give every resident of the United States a bottle. To achieve such a quantity of wine, an enormous amount of grapes is required. The grape harvest begins in January. The first task is to check if the harvest is ripe. For this, color, maturity, intensity of flavor, and sugar content are examined. However, the only way to check if they are ready is to taste them. The color of the grape is very intense, and the seeds are starting to darken, which gives good tannins. They will be harvested in about 10 days. The world's most famous grape is Cabernet Sauvignon. Every year, Luke and his companions harvest in almost 170 square kilometers of vineyards. They would need an army to pick so many grapes by hand. Instead, they use a battalion of grape harvesters that do the work of 200 people. The pneumatic pumps lift the 10-ton machines to the height of the vines. Then they eat the grapes for breakfast. As the machine advances, the 14 fiberglass springs hidden inside vibrate four times a second, enough power to pull out the doubts, but delicate enough to leave almost all the leaves intact. When the grapes fall, they are collected, passed through the machine, and end up in a basket passing from the harvester to a container pulled by a tractor with the help of a conveyor belt. When the container is full, it is removed, and the six-ton load of grapes is emptied into a truck. At this time of year, harvesters work many hours a day to pick the grapes when they are at their perfect ripeness. Working as a team, companions, and the tractor driver harvest up to 200 tons of grapes in a single shift. When the truck is full, it takes its load to the Kezuela winery. During the harvest, up to 6,000 trucks arrive here from vineyards located up to 1,000 kilometers away, and each one must be inspected to ensure that all batches are ready for the next phase. A juice sample is taken to analyze acidity, sugar content, and chemical compounds called phenols that determine the taste and color of the wine. Now begins a race against time at an average temperature of 30 degrees during the Australian summer. The grapes will soon spoil. In the past, harvesters would take off their shoes and stomp on them. Today, they use giant machines, each capable of crushing 100 tons of grapes per hour. From Chardonnay to Cabernet Sauvignon, during peak season, more than 150 trucks a day empty up to 7,000 tons of grapes into these machines. Rotating barriers carry full load of grapes to the press in 25 minutes, but they don't remove the annoying stems. These are removed by rotary shovels that separate them from the grapes. The stems are deposited on a conveyor belt located under the press and accumulate in large piles. Now, the grapes are sorted to make white and red wine. All grapes have a translucent flesh, so both black and white grapes are pressed to extract the juice used to make white wine. The color and flavor of red wine come from the phenols in the skin of the grapes, so black grapes are pressed with the skin and channeled to start the first phase of red wine fermentation. It is here that the expert winemaker, Michael Slater, takes the first sip of the day. We look for the wine's potential in this first phase, and you get an idea of the flavor it will have, and his character with a spicy touch. In this first stage, the white wine is different. The skin contains tannins and other substances that affect the flavor and color, so these unwanted chemicals are eliminated in 16 enormous presses that process over 700 tons of grapes every hour. By rotating the inflatable bag inside the machines, the grapes are pushed against screens 
that remove most of the skin, leaving only the bubbly juice to make white wine. Mikhail serves himself the second cup of the morning. What is sought is a fruity flavor, and therefore it is tasted to see if it is balanced and has the sweetness that characterizes it. This is where a winemaker is seen. But this bubbly fermentation is far from something that accompanies a fish. Any seed or particle of plant material is removed through these rotary filters. As they rotate, the vacuum absorbs the juice through a mesh, and any remaining waste is trapped in a filter around the drum. As it rotates, the waste is removed with a blade and set aside. The juice is clarified, channeled, and stored to make way for the fermentation phase. The fermentation of white and red wine takes place in enormous steel tanks, some with a capacity of over a million liters. Yeast is added to each tank. The yeast feeds on the sugar and the grape juice and excretes alcohol, creating different flavors depending on the different grape varieties. During fermentation, it is important that the temperature of white wine does not exceed 13 degrees and that of red wine does not exceed 24. The temperature is controlled by pumping each tank from a tank filled with chilled water that acts as a giant refrigerator. As the juice ferments, when it reaches the final phase of fermentation, the red wine still maintains its skin. It is removed in machines called inclined drains. Some skins may be added to the wine if the winemaker believes it needs more flavor. The remains are known as lees and are used in the animal feed industry or as fertilizer. Meanwhile, the filtered red wine is fermented again and Mikhail serves himself the third cup of the morning. This is the next phase. Now that it is fermented, you can see that the color is changing. It has a more intense red color, a very good aroma, a lot of body, and a lot of flavor. It has the seal of a good wine. Now the true art of good winemaking is the blend. A single bottle of wine can contain grapes harvested from three different regions of Australia, fermented at different times. People like Frank are responsible for combining them to create the perfect bottle that we will find in the supermarket. What is done here is to analyze several blends. We analyze them over and over again to verify that we meet consumer expectations. Once the blend is finished, the ingredients are pumped from the tanks to the bottling chain. The most expensive bottle of wine costs about 266 euros. One of the best selling wines in the world requires appropriate bottling technology. This company does it in the best possible way. It is one of the fastest on the planet capable of filling 36,000 bottles every hour. And there are three chains in operation. The last phase consists of delivering the bottles to consumers in 50 different countries. Boxes loaded with 672 bottles are taken out and loaded onto trucks for distribution. Every year, 12 and a half million wine cases are shipped from here. Remember, you can subscribe to the channel and give a like if you enjoyed the content. Bye bye.